There's not one thing that we can do to stop mycotoxins. So from the producers of the grain in the field to the feed producers who are making the feed uh, in the factories, through to the owners of the animals, the farmers, the owners of the pets, everybody has a role to play in understanding that the quality of their feed is really important and the higher quality of feed, then the, the better health of the animal. Oltec, en respuesta a los problemas que las micotoxinas suponen para los productores de proteína animal en todo el mundo, ofrece su programa de manejo enfocado a controlar las afectaciones de estos compuestos tóxicos. And so, those mycotoxins can have negative effects on different elements of animal health and performance. So they can affect the animal's immunity, they can affect the uh, feed intake of the animal, they can affect the health of the, the, the gut. So what's really clear now is that the climate has a big effect. And so it's important that in each region, in each growing season, that climate is going to have a, a big impact. So where the grain is originating, the, the climate of the growing season in that region, it's important. The climate will determine which type of molds grow and how many molds will grow, and that will determine which mycotoxins are produced. Nick Adams, director global del programa de manejo de micotoxinas de Oltec, explica que para enfrentar este problema no hay una receta efectiva, ya que la afectación incluso se da por prácticas agrícolas en las granjas donde se producen los insumos para el alimento animal. As I said before, there's not a single step that protects producers, and so it's really just being aware of where the grain is coming from, what's the risk of that grain, and therefore uh, being able to take steps, management steps, uh, to be able to then minimize the risk to the animals. Sin embargo, esta estrategia ofrece una serie de elementos básicos a seguir por parte de los productores para ofrecer un diagnóstico y con base en ello brindar un tratamiento que permita optimizar la producción y así evitar las pérdidas económicas. So, we try to set up the mycotoxin management program to cover the different management areas that can help producers. So, we start off with education, then we think about mycotoxin identification, and we do that by the analysis of mycotoxins. Then we think about quantification. So how do we make the link between the mycotoxin analysis and the potential negative impact on performance of the animal? So how do we try and minimize the effect of the mycotoxins on the animal. And there's different management steps, which includes using a suitable mycotoxin binder, like Mycosol, for example. And then finally, we have evaluation. De acuerdo con Nick Adams, las micotoxinas cobran una especial importancia en México, donde mucho del grano utilizado en la elaboración del alimento animal es importado de Estados Unidos. It, it's interesting in Mexico. You know, clearly on the one hand, a lot of grain is imported from the United States, but there's also a significant amount of grain produced in Mexico. And so understanding the risk from each of those different harvests is important because the mycotoxin mix is different depending on where that, that grain comes from. En Olte concluyen que las micotoxinas son inevitables. Cada año estas cambian en su composición, por lo que es importante adaptarse a las condiciones específicas de cada caso para obtener a través del asesoramiento técnico las mejores soluciones y resultados. If we just try and keep the same uh, strategy all the time, then sometimes that strategy will work, but sometimes that strategy won't work. So it's really important to understand that things change, we need to adapt to that, and, and as all tech, you know, we're looking to adapt our program and uh, innovate around our program to try and constantly bring ideas to the customers uh, in terms of how they can adapt, evaluate and then manage the mycotoxin problem.